mainsail controls. There are four controls that help us control the mainsail whilst out sailing. The primary, which is the main sheet, the kicking strap, the Cunningham, and finally, the outhaul. Let's take a look, firstly, at what the main sheet does. The main sheet is the primary control. To go faster, we sheet in, and to reduce the power, we simply ease out the sail. But imagine we're sailing in a force two. We pull the sailing because there's not much uh, writing moment on the boat. So we think, oh, we'll pull it in. And we continue to pull the sail in and continue to pull the sail in and continue to pull the sail in. But actually what's happening is the boat isn't going any faster. Why is that? Well, that is because if you just take a look at the leech, the more we pull the main sheet, the more we close the leech. And this has now got a hooked leech. And the leech for sail is visible, but the silver mast isn't. And that's telling me that the leech is hooked. So the air won't flow across this sail because the wind is not strong enough to do so. It'll get halfway across the sail and then just not bother going across the sail, which is extremely slow. So when we're sheeting in the mainsail in a light breeze, we really need to be cautious of how much we actually sheet it in. And the mast uh, should be visible from the leech of the sail, like this one is now. But that's absolutely fine when I'm in the dinghy part. But how am I going to achieve that when I'm on the water? Very difficult, because at depth level, I just simply can't see that very easily. Whereas as we're looking at it now from the camera, it's clearly very obvious. So what can we do? Well, simply, what we can do is we can get some tape and we can put a tape datum on here. And this is one I've already pre-done. And what I've got is when I line those two, if I ease the sail and those two marks line up, I know that the leech isn't hooking the mainsail. So if I'm not hiking in a force two, which I'm not going to be in a boat such as this, then I just simply line my two tape marks up and I know I'm going to have smooth, clean airflow, which is going to enter, flow across and exit the sail. Control. When we learned to sail and a gust came in, we were taught to ease out the sail, such as I'm doing now. As the gust went on, we were then to taught to sheet in. But how much do we actually need to sheet out and how much do we actually need to sheet in? It's actually a very small amount and at depth level, if we ease the mainsail by one to two inches, it makes five to ten inches of difference at the top of the sail. So a small adjustment at depth level makes a much bigger effect at the top of the sail. So just consider when you're easing the sail out, how much do I actually need to ease it out in the gust and how much do I need to sheet it on? And actually, it's a very small amount. And if you look at those sailors who appear to be sailing the boat absolutely flat all the time in really gusty days, what they're doing is exactly what I'm showing you now. It's very subtle, constant movements of the main sheet rather than big ins and outs, which provides or makes the boat go very, very unstable. So just remember, small adjustments, as the gust comes in, ease the sail slightly, as the gust goes away, sheet the sail back on. And with both the crew and helm are starting to hike, we'll quickly get to a point where we're unable to keep the boat flat, and that's where the kicker comes in. So once we haven't got enough body weight uh, to keep the boat flat, we're going to apply the kicker, because what the kicker does is depower the boat. So as the wind increases and we can't keep it flat, we're going to feed on a little bit of kicker as I'm doing now. If we still can't keep the boat flat, we're going to put a little bit more kicker on. If the breeze decreases, we're going to ease the kicker to put more power back into the rig. So on gusty days, we'll find ourselves putting the kicker on in the gust and easing it as the gust uh, subsides. So what does the kicker actually do? Firstly, it pulls down on the boom. It pushes forwards at the gooseneck. It bends the mast at the spreaders, it bends the tip of the mast aft, tensions the leech, and as a result of all these, it, it moves the sailcloth forwards, flattening it off, and ultimately depowering the rig. So we only use the kicker cautiously and only in conditions when we're overpowered and un unable to keep the boat flat. As I pull the kicker on, notice the tip of the mast goes back, and watch how the sailcloth is dragged towards the mast, therefore flattening the sail and depowering. As I take the kicker off, the fullness comes back into the sail. As I pull it back on again, just watch again, the sail is flattened. So imagine sailing in a force three to four, and it's quite windy, and you have the kicking strap set slack, as indicated in the boat here. If I sheet out, notice the boom goes up and out. So I'll just show you that again. So with the kicking strap slack, as I sheet out, the boom goes up and out. So yes, the boat, 
will depower because we're sheeting the sail out. Well, actually, that's not correct. As I sheet out, it powers up the front part of the sail. So to reduce the power, I have to sheet out more. And what happens now is we end up having to sheet out much more than we actually need to. So what the solution to this is, is to ensure the kicker is on the required amount to keep the boat flat. So when I sheet the sail out, the boom goes in and out, not up. So it goes in and out and it makes the boat much more easy to sail. So as the breeze increases further and we've exhausted the use of the kicking strap, we now need to consider using the Cunningham. We should only do so in high winds because it's going to depower the rig substantially. So what does the Cunningham actually do? So as I pull the Cunningham on, notice the draft of the sail being dragged forwards. I'd indicated by this diagonal crease just in front of the first sail number and then opening up the upper leech of the sail. So again, as I pull the Cunningham on, it flattens uh, the sail by dragging the luff forward and twisting open the upper leech. The final sail control we're going to take a look at is the outall, and the outall controls the bottom third of a sail. So in this 2000 dinghy, from the bottom grey button down towards the boom is the area it's controlling. So we're going to look at two elements how to set the outall for going to windward and how to set it for going on a reach or a run. When we're going upwind, we want the air to flow across the sail as effectively or efficiently as possible. And to do so, what we want is a flatter sail. And the best way to set up how much outall you actually need is to get your hand sideways and put it in the centre of the boom and then just sheet, or pull on, should I say, the outall, so it's just touching my little finger. And this is a good rule of thumb setting for most dinghies. As I go downwind, I'm going to ease the outall, and now I'm going to put my hand lengthways in the centre of the boom, and it should be just touching my fingertips. And this is going to give more camber in the sail and more return in the bottom third of the sail, just what we're looking for when we're going downwind. Just to recap on the main sail controls, the primary control is a main sheet, one inch to two inches at debt level makes five to ten inches of difference at the top of the mast. So just be very careful when adjusting the main sheet in those gusty conditions. The next control we have is the kicking strap. So remember when we're unable to keep the boat flat, we're going to apply the kicking strap. And remember that flattens the sail, pulling the draft of the sail forwards, therefore depowering the rig. If the wind decreases, firstly ease the kicker to power the rig back up. As the wind's got really breezy and we're unable to keep it flat and we've exhausted the kicking strap option, we're now going to introduce the Cunningham. And the Cunningham pulls the draft of the sail forwards, flattening in it, twisting open, exhausting the upper leech. The next control is the outhaul. Remember the outhaul should be from the width of your hand to your little finger for going to windward. As we go downwind, remember to ease the Cunningham completely, reduce the amount of kicking strap, and put some camber in the sail by easing the outall to the tip of your finger. So, kicker, main sheet, outall, and Cunningham.